Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. This is your ultimate starter guide for Chun Li in Street Fighter VI. Chun Li, classic video game character, one of the greatest video game characters of all time. And in this video, we're going to teach you everything about Chun Li in this game. So we're going to be going over all the basics. We're going to be covering a lot of advanced concepts as well, and pretty much everything in between. So this video is going to be a long one. And as such, there will be timestamps in this video. So skip forward to whatever makes sense for you. Although if you do skip forward, if you could leave a like, it does sincerely help the video. Thank you very much. There is also a companion combo guide already live on the channel. will also be linked in the video description. So we will talk combo and combo theory in this video, but if you want something a bit more in depth and short form, check that out. So we got a lot, a lot, a lot of ground to cover. So let's start with some of the absolute basics here. The pros and cons of Chun-Li. Why exactly should you play this character? So now let's talk some of the pros of Chun-Li. Why are you picking this character? And one, this is kind of the big one out of the gate, is she's Chun-Li. She's literally Chun-Li. Like, that is a selling point in and of itself. Like, let's get real, right? Chun-Li is one of gaming's most legendary characters. So that's a pretty good one out of the gate. But I guess let's talk gameplay, right? So gameplay-wise, when you think of what is Street Fighter, and this is an argument for the ages, right? What is real Street Fighter? Generally, real Street Fighter is considered the old back and forth, lots of button presses, uh, you know, shooting the occasional fireball, and just that's quote unquote classic Street Fighter, right? And when it comes to classic Street Fighter, she is exceptionally good at it in this game. Of course, what makes a character good in Street Fighter is usually how much you don't have to play classic Street Fighter, right? But that's another argument for another day. But yeah, so Chun-Li, one, out of the gate, she's an incredibly fast character. And she's fast in the way that it really matters. Because we talk about, you know, Street Fighter, the back and forth, right? The thing about the back and forth is back walk is always slower than forward walk. So your back and forth cannot be good unless your back walk is also good. And she has the second best back walk in the game. Only Akuma is a faster back walk than her. And before Akuma, she was number one, right? And she has one of the fastest forward walk speeds. So when it comes to the old back and forth, she's legitimately amazing at it. And what helps this is when it comes to the neutral, her neutral is amazing. She has great buttons. She has fantastic stuff. Uh, queen of the crouch medium kick into drive rush, right? Huge buttons, a very interesting and different projectile game compared to some of the other characters. Most characters are kind of straightforward. Chun is a uh, very layered and nuanced. Her ability to just simply control the screen is better than the average character, right? So just pure neutral, pure fundamentals is very strong for Chun. She has a very strong anti-air game. So once again, part of the fundamentals, right? And controlling the screen. A lot of her basic combo structure has incredible corner carry and pressure. So that's really, really good. When it comes to basic super moves, all three of her supers are very good and have a lot of utility. So that's really good. A lot of ways to spend bar. I know some of y'all don't like the charge aspect. She is a charge character, always has been, right? Uh, but, you know, it's not that rough in this game. Also, stuff like spinning bird kick literally has the shortest charge in the game. So that's nice. And there's a lot of fun little tips and tricks for the character, right? Like, say, uh, versus throw loops. Ain't nobody like getting throw looped in this game, right? And she is in a bit of a privileged class of characters that she can deal with a potential throw loop if you call it out much better than the average character. If you get the hard call out, Chun-Li can deal with it better than most characters. And we'll go more in depth into it later in the video, right? But it's nice to have the option because a lot of characters don't got too many options. But yeah, if you like just solid fundamental Street Fighter, Chun-Li is that in spades. Good walk speed, good anti-air, good buttons, good screen control, lots of good options. Now, of course, there is downsides. So we had some pros, let's talk some cons. So con number one, which is nebulous, is she is indeed a charge character, right? To me, this is not a con, but for some people it is. For that, I don't know, grow up. <laughs> I don't know, uh, I love charge. Uh, charge is my preferred motion style, to be honest with you anyways, but she is a charge character, might scare some of y'all away. Now here's the one that should actually scare y'all away. Um, when it comes to just like raw inputs, button presses, difficulty complexity, Chun-Li is about the hardest character in the game. The only character that is in the same range as Chun-Li is Dalsum. If you are playing Chun-Li, 
You will need faster hands, better critical thinking. Basically, everything you do will be harder than just, you know, picking Ryuken or Kuma or whatever, right? Like, you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to put in more time and effort, which sucks. But you know what? For some people, that is a positive, right? Uh, if you are competent with Chun-Li, you definitely earned it. She is not a character that just gives you the wins. She is not autopilot. She is more technical and more difficult than the majority of the cast. Also, another thing you can definitely hold against her is her jump. Her jump is basically the worst jump in the game. And if you don't know some of the particulars, you might say like, well, looks like a regular jump to me, right? This is not a regular jump. A regular jump is 45 frames. Her jump is 49. So if we jump with Ryu, we look at the frame data here, it says total 45. And 45 is what you're gonna find for the majority of the cast. There is some other characters with slightly worse jumps like Lily. Hers is 47 frames. Chun-Li is 49 frames. This means if you just go for a raw jump in into whatever, her jumps are literally in the air longer than other characters. She is in the air longer and therefore that is just that much longer to get dragon punch or anti-aired or whatever. I know four frames doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a split second more and a split second is the difference between getting anti-aired or not getting anti-aired. Now, yes, technically by the numbers, yes, Dalsum has the worst jump, sure, on paper. But Dalsum likes being in the air. Being in the air is not the worst thing in the world for Dalsum, right? Like, he can do some stuff with being in the air. Chun-Li can only just do a regular jump. So if you're a very jumpy kind of player, Chun-Li will break you of that habit real fast because it will cost you games. And on top of the fact that her actual jump is bad, her offense off a full normal jump is also not great. Like she doesn't have a particularly strong jump in attack. So just jumping as a concept is pretty poor for Chun-Li. And also going by the numbers, her backdash is awful. Uh, it has, you know, decent movement, but the total frames is 25 frames. Other characters are usually 23 or less. Now also a downside for her is Chun-Li does not have a throw loop. There's a lots of variations of throw loops in this game and pretty much everybody has a throw loop in some fashion, except for Chun-Li and Honda. They're literally the only two characters that do not. Now it's not to say she doesn't get stuff off throws, we'll cover it later in the video, but you know, a throw loop by the numbers where mathematically it's impossible to mash out, Chun-Li literally cannot do it. And just another kind of by the numbers things, like just kind of her basic damage output on most of her basic combos is average to, I would say, below average. This is the game, it's Street Fighter VI. If you get the right setup, yes, you can always do big numbers. Everyone can do big numbers. But her overall damage output is not as high. She will generally win games through pokes and bits, not through the big sick combo. So that said, chun -Li's still absolutely worth your time, right? She's not a bad character at all. Uh, she's actually been a little bit nerfed. She was quite a bit better earlier in the game's life and had to be toned down a little bit. So she can do all right. And she also is a candidate for buffs in the future. So, you know, time invested now can pay off later. But yeah, Chun-Li, perfectly solid character. Maybe not top tier or nothing, but even with these cons, she definitely works out. Now let's go over Chun-Li's moveset. Let's start with her special moves. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the Kikoken. So you might have noticed right there out of the gate, right? Kikoken, not exactly a normal fireball, although it's to its strength. It's a very different kind of fireball, very modular. And well, if you want to get reductive about it, you can call it poor man Sonic Boom, I guess, but it definitely works out for Chun-Li. So more so than say, you know, the regular Shoto fireball, each button press really changes how the move just works in general. So if you do say the light version, it's, a, as you can see, a very slow fireball, right? And there's one that she recovers fairly quickly from, and she can easily just walk behind it. And, well, this game being this game, also very easily drive rush behind it. Which means, long story short, like, her ability to just control the screen with the light version is very strong. Because while the fireball is live, she can still move around. So, you know, say someone sees that fireball, they're gonna do the old jump over, right? That don't work the same way against Chun-Li because I can still move, I'll just anti-air you. Simple as that, right? And that's one of the cornerstones of what makes us strong. I put the fireball on screen and by the time you can react to it and do whatever, I can react to whatever you're gonna do right back, which makes it just a fundamental huge building block of pressure. Light fireball is one of the reasons you pick this character. 
It is absolutely one of her best moves. Now, heavy fireball in the other shot here. Don't exactly quite go uh, as far as you can see, right? Also a good deal faster. This, I don't know, in a weird way, you can consider this one of her pokes. Like consider this one of her buttons you would do, right? Because the base fireball is so fast and when she does it, it is also very fast. Like Ryu, if he throws heavy fireball, right? It takes 12 frames of startup. For Chun heavy fireball, it is 11 frame startup. So against like Ryu or Akumu who have very good fireballs, her fireball literally starts up a frame faster. It's only a frame, but still it is faster. And her ability to just use this as ability to control neutral from, you know, the old back and forth, right? Is very strong. This is the wall. Light Kikoken is for when you want to pressure the enemy and heavy Kikoken is almost like a defensive tool. This is your not coming in as this is far too fast to react to. They can only maybe anticipate it and do something predictively, but like by the time you can process it happened, you already got hit. So this is a big mid screen poke. This is a full screen pressure tool. Very useful. And of course, medium is well, kind of a mix of the two, right? Doesn't quite go full screen. Almost so, but basically this is when you're actually still trying to actively hit them, but you're just outside the range where like heavy would dissipate. But heavy and light are the main ones. And of course there's EX. So EX, two hitting fireball, and like any EX fireball just destroys regular fireballs with impunity. Now it does not knock down. Like a regular EX fireball for most characters knocks down. Chun-Li, it does not knock down. And cause this works the way it does, that means if you drive rush after the fact, if you catch some fireball clash, you can hit them after the fact. And also leaves you very advantage on hit. So you can actually like, get combos from this, including some kind of tricky corner combos as well, right? Uh, maybe they're not always the most optimal, but sometimes they are still valuable. So, you know, it's useful in the way a regular EX fireball is useful because it is quite fast, goes across the screen quite fast, doesn't knock down, which means there's also combo opportunities after the fact. Now, the lightning legs, another Chun-Li classic move. Unlike older Street Fighter games where, you know, you mash kick, this is just very much just a motion this time around. Now, Chun-Li and lightning legs. Lightning legs is... It's basically filler for most of her moves. Uh, in most combos where you could get it, you're only getting it because it was the worst option. Like, you're doing it because you just didn't build charge enough for uh, spinning bird kick in time, right? Most of the time when you're doing lightning legs, it is the suboptimal play. Now it's not to say there's not value in it because there is, like there is say combos with heavy lightning legs in the corner that are pretty interesting to do and fun, right? Uh, there is part of a pressure game, which we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, lightning legs is very good against burnout, but it's mostly just there. But say you're in that situation where, you know, you got it, might as well do it. The EX version is not bad. The EX version also, there's two versions. So if you just do the base move, the two kicks, it just does the kicks by themselves. If you hit two kicks again, then you'll do the follow-ups. And no, these do not cost any extra meat or any extra resource. It is just basically, do you want the base version, which leaves you uh, some plus frames, or do you just want the part with the knockdown? For the most part, the, the version without the knockdown, the main reason it's a thing is because you can go into like a level two or a level three at the end, because it is an EX, right? Uh, but other than that, if you are spinning the bar, you're gonna go for the knockdown for the most part. Now, I also mentioned that Lightning Legs is air okay. Uh, this is not gonna come up too much. There is some specific anti-throw tech, which is later in the guide with uh, air lightning legs. So there is that and also rarely comes up, but the EX version does do a good chunk of damage as well. But yeah, that's lightning legs. Now spinning bird kick. So charge down, hit up, kick, right? The classic. This is purely a combo move. If you did this move by itself, you're probably gonna get blown up. You are saving this for combos for the most part. And for combos, well, it's a big part of the combo structure. You are gonna be using this uh, as your primary combo ender in a lot of ways. We're gonna talk about it in the pressure sections later in the videos, but the knockdown off spinning bird kick medium especially is very valuable, very strong. You get tons of pressure after the fact. The heavy version does the most damage, it is almost impossible to combo into. Uh, nine times out of 10, if you're comboing into it, it's off stance overhead, which we'll talk about in the stance section later on. Generally though, the medium version is the gold standard most of the time. The enhanced version does cause a pop-up. 
And this is very valuable for, say, whatever given combo, right? When you get that pop-up, well, you're just going to get more damage. You can end your Tensho Kicks for more damage. If you happen to be in the corner as well, you can also tack on some Lightning Legs. So it just makes it your corner damage more efficient. So that's nice, right? Uh, we talked about damage and the pros and cons of chun -Li. Damage is not the best overall. So if you're looking to tack on some extra hurt, this is where you're going to be spending that bar for the most part. Because her combos with EX Bird Kick are generally going to be your most overall averaging damage combos, like other than going for, you know, the big swings. Now, keeping going with the special moves, we have Hazan Shu, of course, go back and kick. And this is basically her anti-projectile move. You smell the fireball coming your way, you can literally just go right over it and bonk them on the other end of things. Now, of course, it's not perfect. It doesn't exactly stop a full screen fireball because what are you hitting on the other end, right? So you got to introduce a bit of an element of risk and be a little bit closer to the enemy. But if you can get it, there is a payoff because you can combo when it is a punish counter. So that's kind of the big deal, right? You have to punish counter the fireball. You got to successfully do it. Like say the medium by itself. It is only two frames advantage by itself, which guarantees exactly nothing. But if you give the additional four frames from a punish counter, then those two frames become six frames and six frames goes into a crouch medium punch. So that is something. Now, on the flip, if you want to be a little bit more risky, the heavy version all is just plus six naturally. So by itself, you don't need a punch counter or anything. It goes into medium crouching, medium punch, that is. So by itself, you can land a combo like this, right? And just combo out, which is nice. Although if you do catch the fireball, right? And it's plus 10, this is punch counter. And then you can like back heavy punch or something like that. But regardless, yeah, if you get the fireball, if you successfully call him out, you get the reward just beyond the base hit. Now, another thing is all versions are true overheads. So they actually do have to stand to block this, right? So if they're being a little sloppy, you might scam them with uh, the light kick version. Does a thousand damage, not nothing, right? Does it from, you know, far away. So it is something like this is more scam territory, but sometimes that's how Street Fighter works. Successively, each version is slower than the last, right? So light's 23 frames, medium's 27. The heavy comes in at 32 frames. So it is easier to see coming the heavier you go, like if you didn't actually do anything, right? If they didn't throw the fireball, like the heavy version, if they're just doing the old back and forth, they see that coming, you're gonna get bopped. Although the medium and heavy versions are safe on block. So if you are trying to use them just as a base attack, as like a bit of a neutral skip, you hit it with like the tip of the move for the most part, like it's just a neutral reset. Now we do have the enhanced version as well. The enhanced version is actually full projectile invulnerability after its initial frames. The other versions have some projectile invulnerability, but this is just from the get go. Like the other versions, depending on how you do it, like you can get bopped by the fireball, right? The EX version, like I'll literally just go through the fireball. I'm actually all the way immune to fireballs after those initial frames. So, you know, if you really smell that fireball coming, well then this is kind of the go-to. It also bounces, which is different. So depending on where you hit, if you're a little bit closer, you can go for Tensho kicks for more damage, or if you're a little further out, you can still get like, say, light bird kick. But yeah, it's a very utilitarian move. It has a purpose. Uh, you don't just throw it out, unless you're looking to scam someone, uh, is mostly her dedicated anti-fireball and some of her bigger combo routes go into like a drive rush back heavy punch into heavy Hazanshu into a big combo. That's all in the combo guide. And the last of her base special moves is the Tensho Kicks. So Tensho Kicks, uh, there's not much to say. Uh, Tensho Kicks, especially the heavy version, is usually just, you know, good combo ender. It does a fair bit of damage. So when you can end the combo with it, if you're just looking for raw damage, that's the way to go. And it is also her dedicated anti-air. So like many anti-air moves, it is just simply actually invulnerable to aerial attacks. And generally, if you're looking to anti-air, you probably want the medium version. It's a good, you know, good split between speed and damage. The heavy version obviously does more damage, but with slower startup, if you're just a little too slow, they might be able to block and then you're gonna die, right? So medium or light, depending on how you're feeling, is usually the way to go for jump-ins, right? Just once again, actually invulnerable to jumps. So if they jump, you do it. And the EX version is her invincible reversal. Now it's not as good as an EX Shoryuken in a lot of ways. 
Uh, but it's still an invincible reversal, and let me tell you, the characters without invincible reversals would kill to have this one, right? So it's still solid in that regard. The one thing to mention is the input is down, down, and kick. This is a contentious input because what you're playing on might make you love or hate this input. Um, if you are on a traditional, you know, console pad, you know, like a PS5 pad, an Xbox pad, or if you're on a leverless controller, this input is amazing, amazing, amazing. If you're on an arcade stick, this input kind of sucks because yeah, you know, down back is normal, you know, in Street Fighter in general, right? And if you want to do this motion, you can't just let go down back, then hit down, then hit down again. This, it won't come out. And for how the nature of arcade stick works, that means you have to go back to neutral, then down, down, which is annoying. On pad or leverless, it's trivial, it doesn't matter, which makes this like superior to a dragon punch motion in a lot of ways. So basically, this is one of the few moves in the game where depending on what you're playing on can really affect your use of it, but there you go. Now to talk her super move. So the first super move for level one is the Kiko Show. And as a level one, it's pretty solid. Uh, admittedly, it actually does a little bit less damage than some of the other level ones out there, but that's fine because it is seven frame startup, which basically makes it tied for fastest super startup. It is invincible, just like other level ones to everything. Uh, you know, strikes, throws, not projectiles though, but can't win them all, right? So it's a good defensive tool in that way. Also, it is incredibly active. Like it is just out there for a long time. There are situations where you can miss initially and then the opponent will just wind up putting themselves into it. It is in fact so active, like you could use it as a reactionary anti-air if you so care to, maybe not the best use, but you can. Also, speaking of air, part of its usefulness is it is air okay. So there are certain combo routes where this can be a thing, depending on uh, you know how you wanna make use of it. Like an option is there. Also, occasionally there's like a floor and lava situation where you just need to stay in the air longer. And this will let you do that. Not always the smartest, but for like those one in a hundred situations, it's there. It's just solid in a lot of the ways that level one is. And due to the nature of a combo structure, you can end just about every combo in it, right? So that's handy. There is also her level two. So her level two is, you know, classic big kicks kind of super, right? You've seen this many times through the ages and it works the way you think for the most part and that you can use it as like a reactionary check against the fireball. It is full invincible startup uh, against fireballs as well, right? Although uh, compared to some older Street Fighters where I can nail you from like most of the screen, that is not happening here. You gotta be fairly close to the enemy to use it in that way. Now the other thing is it's also combo okay after the fact. Like notice I just spent two bars right after my little combo. I now have over a bar, so I can still gain meter after the super. So that's actually really good. Its base damage as a super is not the highest, but it is scaled with the fact that you get a guaranteed combo after the fact, right? And for combos after the fact, check the companion combo guide video, because you can do some things with it. So the fact that you have additional options after the combo, the fact that you can set up, you know, with the combo pressure, which we'll talk about, and the fact that you can gain meter after doing the level two, which makes it technically not cost the full two bars. These all make it just a very solid super all in all. And of course we have the level three, right? Level three, level threes are generally the least interesting supers gameplay wise. Obviously visually they're very interesting because they're just there to do a lot of damage. There's very little nuance besides just do damage. And Chun-Li's does damage. You will get the damage in just like everybody else. Not too much to say besides that uh once again here uh due to the nature of her combo routing it's just very easy to land you'll always be able to get it when you need it so other than that it's a level three does the damage nothing else to say and now to quickly go over her command normal so one she is a character that can wall jump uh due to the nature of street fighter six this isn't going to come up all the time but the option is there and now the command normals themselves like She's got some good ones, like back or forward. It works out either way, medium punch. It's just a big old stab poke. And this has always been like strong move for her, regardless of what button it's been over the years. It remains very strong, seven frames, good active frame, special cancelable, incredibly disjointed hitbox. Like hopefully I'm showing on the screen here, but uh, yeah, very disjointed hitbox, just super workhorse of a move. 
Also disjoint hitbox back heavy punch. Another big wall of active frames. Lots of advantage. He actually goes into heavy lightning legs by itself without the need of like a punish counter or drive rush or whatever. This is also going to be used in a fair bit of combos. He does have a proper overhead. And it's very by the number. There's not much to say other than this is Street Fighter 6. So you can definitely drive rush overhead. And from a drive rush overhead, you can get a combo. We have forward heavy kick. So the main use of this move is it does go over lows. So her hurt box is above the ground. So characters that are very pokey with their crouch medium kicks or whatever low button, this will crush that. So if you smell it coming, it's a hard counter. And you can see here, it is a punish counter. So when the situation calls for it, you can actually get a good chunk of damage off of this as well. One weakness, it does have only two active frames. So even if you're trying to hit with like the tip of the move, it's always going to be negative pretty much no matter what. Uh, you do got to bank on this move actually connecting, but still it moves forward an incredible amount. Not as much as stand heavy punch, but still it's there and it does beat lows. So that's something. Now we do have down forward heavy kick. This is the neck breaker. Uh, now neck breaker is so so like realistically right it is not a fast move you can get punished just for attempting it but if you do manage to land it it is advantage on block which is nice and if you do land it well guaranteed combo so uh it's just basically you're going to be playing on your enemy's reaction times if the, the reaction times are even mildly adequate they'll blow you up for doing it but if not then you can get away with murder and finally you got the toe taps yoskaku go so down medium kick in the air you can get up to three in a row, and they are special cancelable as well. So if you get them, they can go in like, say, EX Lightning Legs or whatever. Uh, very important for her combo routing. Okay, so now that we got the rest of the moves set out of the way, let's talk the stance. So the stance is a big part of what Chun-Li is in Street Fighter VI, and part of why people find her very difficult to play. Because not only is chun by default, over all the years, all the games, like a bit more difficult than the average character. And you know, she's a charge character on top of that. And now she's a charge stance character, which for some people, it's already too much, right? And let me assuage your fears. It is not as bad as you think. You just gotta be armed with the knowledge of how it all works. And that's exactly what we're gonna tell you right here, right now. So stance by itself, just quarters go back, hit a bunch, and then you're in the stance. So one of the key things about stance it is special cancelable from every normal. So like if I go medium punch, I can go into stance. It's also special cancelable from the command normals. It is also special cancelable from normals that are not special cancelable. So like say stand heavy punch. Stand heavy punch, try as I might, will never go into lightning lanes because it's not a special cancelable move. Yet, it will go into stance. So anything you do that is basically on the ground or even a little bit above the ground, like forward heavy kick, forward heavy kick goes into stance too. Anything you do will basically go into stance, even if it normally cannot go into other moves. That's one of the very important aspects of the stance. Going into it is incredibly free form. And before we talk about the various stance buttons in depth here, another thing, once you're in the stance, is it removes the charge requirements for any move. So say, you know, Kikoken, right? Charge back, forward, punch. If I'm in stance and hit a button, it just comes back, forward, punch. Much the same, spinning bird kick, charge down, up, kick, right? If I am in stance and connect with any move, it just becomes down, up, kick. There is no charge needed at all. You just go directly into your specials, just hit back, forward, punch, or down, up, kick. That is it, that's all. You don't got to worry about charge timing once you're in the stance. That is a big benefit to all the various stance moves. And not that it'll come up too often, but just the act of being in the stance will go underneath some, some, not all fireballs. So I can just go underneath the sonic boom. That's fine. Someone like uh, Terry, right? Power wave is very low to the ground. So you don't exactly get to duck it, right? That's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles on that one. Also, you are allowed to block while you're in the stance. So if for whatever reason you're in stance and you know you smell something coming, couldn't do whatever you want to do, you are allowed to block. And also there's a lot of special rules here, right? Also, all the stance moves count as normals, not special moves. So therefore every stance move can go into a level one, two or three super. Now, a stance move. So stance has a move for every button. 
So basically, like medium heavy punch, like medium heavy kick, there is six moves out of stance. So stance, light punch, is just a little poke. It's all it needs to be. So say naturally combos from something like down heavy punch, and you can do very little, not huge combos, that's nice. It's just a little poke, that's all it is. The stance medium punch is her classic slide. So it is only in the stance, can't do it outside of the slide. It is a sliding low, incredibly low to the ground, obviously goes underneath fireballs, goes even underneath some like normal attacks as well. Horrifically unsafe on block. Like even if you space it correctly, that's still negative 20. Like if you get blocked, even at like the spacing, like it's gonna be bad. So make sure this hits. You're not gonna be using this one too often unless you get the hardest of hard callouts. Stance, heavy punch is a double hitting overhead. Also, if it were to be blocked, it is only negative three, so it's very safe. And this is quite strong. This is what we call a scammer move. So it's 23 frame overhead. Like you say, oh, that's really slow, but you'll be hitting people with drive rush 21 frame overheads all the time. They don't block that, so trust me. Other than the fact that they call you entering the stance, they it'll hit people. Don't worry about it, all right? And the thing about this, like all the other moves, is it is special cancelable, right? So if I hit you with this, then I can just have down up heavy kick. This naturally goes in the heavy spinning bird kick. And then all of a sudden, for a hit confirmable overhead, you're eating a big chunk of damage. Stance light kick is a, list, a little low poke. Um, if you do not cancel it, just you will re-enter the stance immediately after the fact. And then you'll wake up, but you can just kind of keep poking with it. Uh, this is something that can just be a little off-putting to some people, because usually you're going to see like on the back of uh, a Kikoken or a uh, medium bird kick, especially if it's hit confirmed, right? Uh, so stagger pressure is usually something people wouldn't expect, but it is something that is available. And once again, goes into Kikoken, which basically makes it always safe on block if it is blocked. Much the same here. Medium kick, another low, very long range low. Also moves Chun very far forward. Now this one uh, for combo ability, poke ability, uh, it is a good deal slower as in a few frames than the light kick. So in situations where light kick would be a natural combo, like off say down heavy punch or a counter hit stand heavy punch, you will need like a bigger confirm as the medium kick does not naturally combo in most situations. You'll need a special situation for it to be a natural combo. That said, when you can get it to combo, uh, since it moves so far forward, it can go into stuff like EXE Koken, and it'll leave you directly beside the enemy with those advanced frames, so you can combo after the fact. That's really cool. So it's really good for like your heavier combo routes when you have the guaranteed damage. Uh, it's not the worst just to like toss out. Like, I don't know. Don't, don't use this over crouch medium kick. Don't use it over crouch medium kick. But like when you special cancel into it and you just have the threat of it every now and then, that's okay. And then finally, Stance Heavy Kick is the launcher. This is one of your main bread and butters for combo ability because you will launch them and then you're a couple toe taps away from your bread and butter. Really simple as that. You're going to use all time combos. So yeah, Stance has a lot of particulars as we've gone over, right? It is confusing, like, especially when you could pick Ryu, Kenna, or Kuma and just go, you know, Burr, or even Jury. Jury's a lot easier if you're looking just for the waifu stuff. Uh, but yeah, Chun is trickier. Stance is a big part of it. But now that you know, hopefully you'll be armed with the knowledge and it's not as intimidating. Now let's talk notable normals. And Chun's got a good amount, right? Chun being good at classic Street Fighter, uh, she's got really good pokes, really good normals. So let's start with, well, Crouch medium kick. Crouch medium kick. It's a pretty staple move for a lot of characters in Street Fighter 6. Chun is a bit different. Yes, she can drive rush after crouch medium kick. So can many characters, right? The thing is, like, hey, Jury, crouch medium kick, drive rush. Sure, whatever. Jury, eight frames. Huh, okay. Chun Li, seven frames. So. She actually has a faster crouch medium kick than many of the other characters that do the whole crouch medium kick into drive rush thing. And then there's other characters like Jamie. Jamie also has a seven frame crouch medium kick that is drive rush cancelable. That's great. But as you're noticing here, he's not connecting. And yet, Chun-Li will, right? 
So she has comparable range to other characters like Jury, like Cammy, with the eight framer approach medium kick, but she has a seven framer. So basically got all the things that are good about it, except hers is just faster. And thus, well, uh, we already mentioned it once or twice in the video, but Chun-Li, she likes the crouch medium kick and the drive rush. Uh, every character does. She likes it a bit more than those characters. And if you happen to be backing up and just using it as like a defensive move as well, well, as long as you have any amount of charge, just toss in heavy kick token, completely safe on block. And if it does connect, well, you get the damage in. And yes, of course, it does naturally go into, say, like medium legs as well, except that's not hit confirmable. So, um... You might be betting the farm on that one if it gets blocked, right? Versus uh, Heavy Key Koka, nice and safe, no worries. So just strong as a poke, just strong in all the ways that a crouch medium kick can be strong in this game. And it is just flat out one of the better one of those. Now, uh, more traditional buttons. Let's try Stand Heavy Punch. So Stand Heavy Punch has got some range on it. This is not a fly-by-night move here. You can uh, pop people pretty all right with uh, considering the range. 13 frame startup is very acceptable. It's really good as a base poke. Now, it's not special cancelable. So in situations where you get caught by a DI, you're kind of done like dinner because like all you can really do is go into stance and that's not going to save you in time. So against DI, happy people watch out a bit. But otherwise, just controls the flow of space very well. Solid poke hard to contest against unless you are going for random di's just as a poke a workhorse of a move also it is stance cancelable right and here's the thing as a button as a poke if it connects as a counter hit or better then it becomes natural combo starter stance light kick will come a combo with stand heavy punch if it hits as a counter hit or a punish counter and uh, in the situations where you get the punish counter then you can get stance medium kick as well when you're doing the old back and forth counter hits are gonna happen and the potential reward off this is uh, fairly large. Like you can get potentially poked on, you know, as long as you pick and firm it, for uh, almost 3000 damage, that's not nothing. So from further ranges, uh, this along with Heavy Kikoken, uh, cause I do consider Heavy Kikoken basically a poke, like it's a fireball, but you might as well consider it one of her buttons basically with how you use it. Uh, the range game here from this further out here, Chun-Li does very, very well for herself. And of course we mentioned Crouch Medium Kick here, seven framer. Seven framer as well is forward or back, man normal medium punch, the handshake as it's been called over the decades. This is also very strong. Uh, it is for one thing, much safer on block than Crouch Medium Kick. Crouch Medium Kick, if you're a little too close, depending on the character and how aware people are, you might get punished. This is just straight up unpunishable no matter what, even literally point blank. So that is nice. And like Crouch Medium Kick, it is also special cancelable. And basically just a good way to bully people, right? Uh, it does have a disjointed hitbox as we talked about earlier in the video. Basically the part where the actual hand is, she can hit you, you can't hit her. So that's always helpful. And this along with Crouch Medium Kick is like the kind of core of the poking game up close. And then, of course, talking up close, let's talk Stand Light Punch. Uh, normally, for most characters, I wouldn't advocate for just the basic light as much, even though they're useful. The thing is, at a four framer, this has two things over a lot of other characters. One is the range. Her range on Stand Light Punch is way beyond most of the cast. Even the characters with good Stand Light Punches, Chun-Li outranges most of them. So even though it's a four framer, like so much of the rest of the cast, when yours will whiff, Hers will not. That's good. Also, advantage. Hers is more advantageous on hit than most of the rest of the cast. Like, by itself, it goes into stand medium punch. Lights into mediums without counter hit is very rare in Street Fighter 6. Maybe like Street Fighter 5 or whatever back in the day that was more common. Here, it's incredibly rare. And for Chun, it's no big deal. It's just that advantage on hit. So if you are bullying people up front... Like, you're getting some of your more important basic combo structure, right? Like, this is an important combo for Chun. Like, that works out. And then there's the counter hit game, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But it counter hits into some very important things. So, yeah, just really strong button. So, from basically close ranges, she's a threat. From a little further out, she's a threat. From even further out from there, she's a threat due to her various options. Once again, Chun-Li, when it comes to the old back and forth, is incredibly proficient. 
Some other things to mention besides just, you know, the poke stuff, right? Yeah, crouching heavy punch. So double hitting. In and of itself, it's a little slower, admittedly. You know, it's 11 frames. Not necessarily the golden move you want to do in someone's face. You know, in a land of jabs and all that, right? But the thing is, as a two hitter, it is hit confirmable. And it does hit confirm into stance like kick. You see it hit? Cool. Go for it. Good combo structure over 2,000. Good pressure after the fact. Like, it's good. Also, Dry Rush version, uh, it is plus one on block. She doesn't have much plus frames. Although, to mention, another notable normal, Stand Medium Punch is plus one on block. As a five framer move being plus on block, it is uh, pretty okay to bully with. Uh, the one thing, though, it does have shorter range. Like, two of these will not connect successively on block. But still, plus frames are plus frames, so it's always useful. And this one's a bit more character specific, but Neutral Jumping Heavy Kick. This move legitimately hits both sides. So against some characters, like say, you know, a scissor kick happy bison or whatever, um, you can neutral jump and regardless of which side he winds up on, you'll still get the hit no matter what, or say like a headbutt happy Honda. Uh, this is definitely more matchup, you know, applicable, but uh, a move like this that just legitimately hits both sides in a wide way and not just like a base cross up style move. Uh, it can be situationally useful depending on the match. So good pokes, lots of good pressuring style moves, uh, some decent damage potential off these moves if you can manage to out poke people, which is really good. Uh, easy, fast, plus frames really good. Chun's got some stuff to go this in her favor. She's a very, what we call buttonsy character in that you're just gonna be tossing out a lot of buttons in neutral and for good reason, because her buttons are pretty good. Now, in our next section, we're just gonna talk about Chun-Li versus people who jump. Dealing with jumpers is a fact of life in Street Fighter. Always has been, always will be. Some people just get jump happy. That's just how it is, right? And Chun is very blessed when it comes to just dealing with people who jump. So we've already talked about it, right? But she has Tensho Kicks. Tensho Kick is effectively the analog of a Dragon Punch, right? It is invincible against aerial attacks. They make the obvious jump, the potential kick them, done deal, easy as, right? So that's fine, but she's got so much more. So if you're on the ball, she has an air throw. Like if you just snipe it out, you can just throw people out of the air. Air throw is five frame startup, probably faster than whatever button they're pressing, especially because they're waiting to hit the button on the way down. So if you just catch them on the way up, you can also air throw them pretty as you please. And just having an air throw is a blessing as well. Being an air to air, jump medium punch is a juggle okay move. So if you catch him, just air to air, once again, you can snipe him, go into EX legs, whatever. She also has stand medium kick. And stand medium kick is just a really strong button to snipe people out, right? So if you're a little slow on the ball with the Tensho kicks, stand medium kick, just a single button answer. You don't need them input at all, right? It is a very strong anti air option. And she also has stand roundhouse, which is extra, extra strong. Besides the fact, it's just a big old hitbox, right? So if they make the dumb obvious jump, then you got them good to go, right? Notice, say, compared to stand medium kick. So stand medium kick, jury flips out and lands on the ground. Stand heavy kick, she hits the ground, right? And when you see something, that means you can probably get a combo follow up. And sure enough, for Chun, you can. And even better yet, that was with me counter hitting the enemy, right? This happens even if I don't counter hit the enemy. There's an important distinction here. Someone like Dalsam has back heavy punch, the yoga sniper it's sometimes called, right? Because it snipes people right out of the air. And it is dry rush cancelable, so you can get follow-ups after the fact, which is very good, which makes it more damaging as an anti-air. But it only gets follow-ups if it connects as a counter hit or better. If it does connect as a counter hit or better, they just flip out of the air, as we just mentioned, right? See jury hitting the ground, so it needs counter hit or better. Chun Li. It just hits the ground. You don't need a counter hit. So in Dalsam's case, you can get the hit, burn the bar, then realize, oh, whoops, I screwed up. You get nothing, right? Chun-Li, if this lands, you get an anti-air with this. The follow-up, which generally speaking is stand medium kick into heavy tensho, is always guaranteed. Regular hit, counter hit, punish, it doesn't matter. If you snipe them out of the air, you are getting some primo damage off an anti-air, not just a little slap on the wrist of the turret you're getting some appreciable damage in. As like, bad jump, over 2000 damage. People will think twice about jumping after that point. And of course, 
We can kind of swing for the fences here. We don't just need to go for potential pick. We can go for the big home run, right? So Chun's ability to get damage off a badly placed jump is actually substantial. Now to note, when you do this, go to stance cancel. You will have to delay the medium kick. If you go for it immediately, or you're just going to whiff, but you know, practice it. It works out. And if you're in somehow a position for the home run swing, it'll let you get it. Like, <laughs> if you eat this off a of jump in, you're not going to be too happy about that, right? Like, that's not just Dragon Punch. That, that's that's big. So uh, just given her wealth options, like she has the basic stuff. The basic stuff is really good. She has button anti-air. She has like, air throw. She has situational anti-air. She's got a lot of things. Also, Tensho Kicks, just given the nature of the input, is also extra strong. Like, say the basic cross-up. It's a building block of Street Fighter, right? Everyone does cross-ups. And there's tricks for, you know, dealing with cross-ups with a uh, Dragon Punch motion move, right? We call it a cross-cut. But you don't need cross-cuts for Chun. You just hit down, down. And whenever you hit the button, whichever direction they are when you hit the button is the direction, you know, Tensho Kick goes. So you don't need any advanced tricks or whatever. If they jump over your head, you hit down, down, medium kick, light kick, whatever. And it just works. So when you're trying to gimmick out Chun-Li with cross-ups or whatever, it's harder against her than the normal character because she doesn't need advanced tech or advanced knowledge of the situation. Just hit buttons, go burr, and it works out. So yeah, anti-air Chun-Li, very blessed. Now let's talk Chun-Li and the neutral. So if you've been watching the whole video up to this point, then you probably already got a good idea what's going on here. But for the people who skipped ahead, uh, Chun-Li's neutral is very much the classical Street Fighter neutral of walking back and forth, hitting buttons, and she is blessed in many respects. One, her back and forth is better than just about everyone's except for Akuma. Uh, she has one of the fastest forward walk speeds and the second fastest back walk speed, so her back and forth is really good. And her buttons, well, buddy, her buttons are some of the best in the game. She has forward medium punch, which is just a really strong disjointed poke. She has the crouch medium kick, which naturally goes into a drive rush. And if it goes into a drive rush, actually, it goes into combos, right? So she has that, and her crouch medium kick is debatably best in class. It has the range of some of the other characters, like a jury, like a Kami, except hers is faster at seven frames. So there is other seven frame crouch medium kick characters, but hers is more ranged than them, right? So she has the range of the slower buttons, but with the speed of the faster buttons. So basically everyone wants to crouch medium kick drive rush. It's just the game. But Chun-Li is literally just better at it than the other characters in a combination of speed and range. And the combos she gets off it are some of her best combos that give her her best knockdowns. It's exactly what she's looking for. Like these situations are what she's looking for regardless. And if she gets it off the drive rush, great. And for the folks that mash reversal on every drive rush, which is fair, right? It's trivial for her just to hit confirm it and just go into crouch light punch. And then that's it. It's gapless. There's no possible way out. So basically mash all you want here. It's inescapable, right? It doesn't really matter. And the thing about this is it gives her, you know, the common good situation as well. So you do this block, boom. So plus two, am I going to throw you right up to the fact? Or, you know, am I going to try to delay and, you know, hit you with a combo? Or like, am I going to back walk it? And once again, her back walk's amazing. And shimmy you. Like these options are not necessarily like unique to Chun-Li in any way. But, you know, she's just really proficient at the whole crouch medium kick drive rush thing which is really great to have in street fighter 6 we have that right we have the good buttons that's great uh and she has even better buttons from further out right we have stand heavy punch which at 13 frames is a really strong button it's always safe on block now in season two so if you space it badly you don't get punished so just a big old wallopy poke which is nice as it stands on counter hit combo starter really handy gives a some substantial damage off that poke if it hits and if you fish with it, it's basically always going to be safe. So, like, they have to really know what's coming to stop that ahead of time, right? So, not the worst thing in the world just to fish with as well. So, just strong pokes again. And then we have Kikoken. 
So Hikoken is a huge part of the neutral and her screen control. Perhaps, uh, you know, the cornerstone other than just being people's faces and hitting buttons, right? Because regular heavy Kikoken has a faster startup than the traditional fireball does. Very fast travel time. If you're at any point where you're just backing up and hitting buttons, and as well, remember too, forward medium punch is also back medium punch. You get your choice. So you can be charging while you're doing this. Just toss this bad boy out. Like, if you want to look at it one way, it's almost like a fighting retreat. If you want to get in on Chun, and she just wants to commit to just, you know, being able to pass him throwing Kikokens, not much you can do about it other than taking a risky option like a jump. Or just doing something, right? And she shuts down jumps very well. And so basically, her ranges, jab range, very strong. Just outside of jab range, very strong. Outside of that range, very strong. Even further yet, in that same range or further out, very strong. She controls space very well, and then when you're all the way out, then her neutral becomes, I toss like Kikoken, and I can easily follow up and pressure you. I recover very quickly. Maybe not Guile quick, but, you know, Guile can be Guile. Um, we can just walk forward after the fact. We can dry rush after the fact. There's so many things that can be done. Once this is on screen, and if it's not immediately contested, Chun-Li effectively dictates the pace for the next few seconds of the match. Like, if you're a jury here, okay, you know, I'm gonna do the thing and take out the fireball game I stock. Not a smart idea against Chun-Li. I just ripped your friggin' head off, right? Uh, if you try to react to that fireball after I've already well and recovered, dry rush, or just maybe even just walk forward, hit a button, right? She can do that as well, right? Um, it's difficult to do. You kind of like have just have to let Chun Li do her thing when it's on the screen. If you don't immediately deal with it, Chun Li's already recovered and she can just kind of do whatever. So that's really strong as Chun Li, right? You do this. I now dictate the pace for the next few seconds, and that is super valuable against anybody. Chun Li basically is one of the few characters that's effective at basically every range. Effective point blank. Effective just outside of point blank and you know traditional footsies range. Longer range, very effective as well for multiple reasons. Either use using stand heavy punch or using heavy Kikoken as effectively a poke. And from further out, this is when you start establishing like Kikoken, drive rushing after the fact, walking after the fact. It doesn't particularly matter. Just you put a threat out on the screen and then it has to be dealt with or you walk forward and then you just set the tone and you get to hit more buttons and they got a deal. So basically classical Street Fighter neutral. What you would expect out of what you think Street Fighter is, Chun-Li does that very, very well. I guess the downside is the neutral is what she actually needs to do, right? She doesn't like just teleport in or do some weird gimmicks and like bypass everything. She actually has to play the game. She plays the game very, very well, but part of good neutral is not <laughs> having to play neutral, right? And that other than like maybe Yolo has on shoes, which uh, I don't recommend too much. Uh, that is not as good for Chun. Now, in a bit of a follow-up to the neutral section, just general pressure, I want to talk Chun and counter hits. So, stand light punch is a true blessing when it comes to counter hits. We've talked about it earlier in the video. Well, certainly not the only four-framer light punch on the block, right? What it is, is simply longer range than just about everyone else's, which is really good. Also, more advantage on hit than just about everyone else's. And that means for, you know, general combo ability... Well, it gives you good general combo ability, but we're talking specifically counter hits. Like stagger pressure, just poking out once again. At the range most people want to hit mediums, Chun can hit a light. And that means, frames being frames, she's going to win because it's just faster, right? So when we're at that range, and we know if they stick out a button and we get that counter hit, what do we get? Well, there's two routes. We can get a forward medium punch, because plus five on hit with a counter hit, plus two more frames, seven frames. And hey, that's a seven frame move. Or... We can get Crouch Medium Kick. Both are good, but Crouch Medium Kick is better. So if you're just bullying around here and you see that connects, awesome. What do we get off this, right? At minimum, we can go into Medium Legs. And Medium Legs will give us uh, some advantage frames. So then we can just bully more and maybe attempt to throw. Sure. Or we can just cash out immediately and go for EX Lightning Legs. That's another option. That's almost 2,000 damage. That is not nothing. It is not nothing. But here's the thing. So this is the easy way. And I don't begrudge anyone who just does this because it is just easier. But if we go into Crouch Medium Kick, 
The thing about this specifically is since it's crouching, we can start building our charge. And well, if we're building our charge, we get bird kicks, right? And wouldn't you know it, stand, light punch, counter hit, crouch, medium kick, medium bird kick is a natural combo. So here is the thing. How do you have time to build a charge? There's no black magic here. There's no sorcery. There's no trick. It's just difficult. You really and truly, the second you hit stand light punch and you're holding down, hit down immediately. Don't hit medium kick right away because, you know, it won't come out, but hit down immediately. The one thing about spinning bird kick is it's the fastest charge move in the game. Not All charge moves are not created equal. They all have different amount of charge. And the thing with spinning bird kick is you only need 30 frames of charge. So when you go for jab, hit down immediately, then you hit medium kick, then hit up and medium kick, and you get it. So 1600 damage, and we're gonna cover this later, but medium bird kick is one of the two best options you get for post knockdown pressure. This is something you actively wanna be looking for all the time, and this gives it to you. So this is something you actually want to aim, just aim for, right? Like it's certainly better than just medium legs. And if you're on the ball and you're hit confirming anyways, you can also just go in the expert kick as well. Then you're getting over 2000 damage. And so, yeah, it's good. This is one of the things where this is why Chun-Li has to work harder than other characters. Other characters could just do like, say, crouch, light punch, crouch, medium kick. Doesn't work for that way for Chun-Li. Crouch, light punch does not give enough advantage. So Chun-Li has to go immediately from standing into being able to build enough charge into medium kick into bird kick. This is the optimal way to do it. It sucks. I wish it was easier. Practice makes perfect. I got to give you the old adage. I know I wish I could give you a way to cheat this, right? But you, you can't. Unfortunately, you do kind of have to earn it. So one thing is you don't have to also immediately hit up and medium kick right away after you hit your crouch medium kick. You can just delay it a split second just to give you, you know, that extra frame of charge. But yeah, this is really good. Basic poke, you're gonna stuff people all the time with this button. And once again, if you just go for like this, I won't begrudge it. No one will, because it's just easier. And you still get a good reward. Her stand light punch is like low key kind of messed up and the ability to bully with it outside of everyone else's other light punch range. Like this is basically, you know, the beginning of other people's medium range and Chun can still blast you, right? So the rewards are there is basically what I'm saying, right? A basic poke is a major building block for Chun. She is really strong at counter hitting people. Now let's talk Chun Li and Burnout. So Chun Li is actually very proficient at both causing burnout and bullying people once they're burned out. Now causing burnout is not something I ever really see people talk about. Like she has one easy tool and it's a hammer, right? Stand heavy punch. It's a good poke anyways, right? And Stan Heavy Punch does over half a bar in drive gauge damage when it connects. Like three of these basically takes two bars. Like that's a lot off like a basic poke. Yes, you're a little negative after the fact, but then again, you know, oh no, I'm negative three from this far away. Who, who cares? Really, who cares? So just when it comes to like basic burnout, like this is a hammer. Like if you smell people are like losing bar, go for it. Also, if you want to just scam it in, uh, this dance cancel light kick into uh, Kikoken takes a full bar in and of itself. And other things like back heavy punches, the half bar, like even like a basic sequence you're gonna do without thinking about it, right? Like medium punch here, which is the plus frames. So medium punch and light punch try to catch a counter hit. And you know, that's like 70% of bar as well, right? So. It's not really something people talk about, but she can drain bar pretty all right. Once again, space stand heavy punch as a poke and just shred people's bar. So what happens now once they're actually in burnout? So some fun things happen. So one, heavy lightning legs. Now it's plus one on block, you know, and also plus one on block in and light punch distance, which as we talked about, is pretty good counter hit. So that's nice. EX lightning legs also plus one on block. So either or, Yet yeah, plus on block frames and demand. Of course, EX landing legs is very fast. So you're just basically demanding my your turn just right there. Instant air light kick lightning legs are plus one on block. So uh, you know now you're avoiding a lot of lows and just going for whatever. And this is uh, basically it's like Street Fighter Five days all over again, right? So a lot of the lightning leg variations being plus on block is quite strong. Medium kick has on you. 
plus on block. And of course, heavy, therefore, plus three on block. So now you can just kind of scream in with your dumb neutral skip moves and be plus on block four. Every forward medium punch, plus on block. And of course, your actual plus moves, like stand medium punch, is plus five on block. Basically, you can just really bully, right? But the really fun thing, too, is she has like actual appreciable chip damage setups as well. But look at this scenario. I'll make you block heavy legs. Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. And that's like, what? 15, 20% just right there. And that's like not complex. That's, there's no setup there, right? Every time I do that, I'm plus one. So Jab's gonna win. But if you hit a button, other than if you went for like, you know, an invincible super, I'm gonna win. You're gonna take more damage. So it's just good. Also, the follow up to EX legs, base EX legs does not do much damage to ship, but the follow up does a good amount. So basically, if you can get someone in the corner and you can just get the legs beginning, she can just actually like start blendering people for real and like take off appreciable amounts just in raw chip. So that is pretty cool. So now Chun Li and beating throws. So Chun Li, unfortunately, is not blessed with a throw loop. In fact, she's one of two characters in the whole game that can't do it, right? But let's look at the positive side in that she is one of the best characters at defeating a throw loop. And that's thanks to jumping lightning legs. So lightning legs, when you do it in the air, depending on your button, you have like different fall rates, right? Specifically the light version, you do it fast as possible timing, as low to the ground as possible, and it hits the enemy, it's a big fat plus zero. Well, that doesn't mean much, does it, right? Zero, who cares? You know, we're trying to avoid the uh, Street Fighter V. If you weren't around for Street Fighter V launch, Chun-Li, this was a problem, to put it lightly. But here's the thing, against, you know, the traditional throw loop, obviously I can hit buttons all I want, I'm gonna lose, because it's a throw loop. I can jump out, but for the most part, people would recover time, bought me on the head, all that. But if I can jump out and immediately change my jump arc and land immediately back on top of your head, what does that mean? What it means is I have a way out. So when this whole nonsense is happening, if I jump out and then hit you with lightning legs, I get a punish counter. And now, instead of being plus zero, punish counter adds four frames, so I'm plus four. So this means if I do the hard call out here, I get full combo. Like I can get some actual appreciable damage on the board. I don't just merely escape it, right? You know, some characters can backdash a throw loop then do like a jab counter hit combo. Uh, for Chun, since her backdash is worst in class, don't work out that way as much, right? Chun doesn't have a regular backdash. She has a slow backdash, but we can do this. Do lightning legs low to the ground, land on your head, punish countering your throw attempt. Or the billions and trillions out there that have been thrown to death. You know, being able to take your life back seems pretty nice, right? So you basically just get a better option than most people are given. And that's really nice. Not the least of which is the whole setup is also anti-shimmy because it's completely safe on block. Like, it is negative three, like, depending on how close they are, maybe you don't want to be negative three in the face, but it's safe. They can't do anything guaranteed to you, right? So, if they're trying to, you know, shimmy the throw tech or whatever, they're trying to do the very myriad of options that make throw loop so jacked up. If for whatever reason you don't connect and you just get blocked, it's still good. You're still good to go, and this is what makes it strong. So, maybe you can't avoid throw loops the normal way, most people would, but you have a unique and interesting option. The only thing is, you gotta make sure it's low to the ground. If you're higher to the ground, it'll change the frame data and it might not be a punish counter. And then, well, it might, you know, it is a punish counter if it's very high, it still won't matter. Like the frame data won't let you get the combo. But yeah, just keep it as low and snug to the ground as possible. Now to talk Chun-Li and basic combo theory. Once again, we do have the full companion combo guide. So check that out. There's a lot of stuff in a lot of short order there and you won't have to hear me ramble. But yeah, so basic Chun-Li combo theory is one. Light, light is plus five. Medium punch, five frames, so easy peasy, right? So uh, off either light or just raw medium punch, usually the way to go, something like that. Uh, damage is appreciable, the good knockdown, we're gonna talk about knockdown pressure later. That's generally what we're aiming for. We're, in all scenarios, if it can be helped, we're generally aiming for a medium bird kick knockdown. And in situations where we aren't, 
then we're basically aiming for heavy kick, potential kicks, or maximum damage. Now, the thing about medium punch, though, and uh, its various combos, it has to have weakness, right? Because it's five frames, which is very fast for a medium. It's plus on block, which is really good, right? Goes into nether medium meterlessly, or like no counter hit, no whatever, no gimmicks. So the problem is if like you're even like even a little further out, it's gonna whiff. This only works point blank. So you can't always rely on it. So in those situations where you're not sure, right? You can just go for like multiple jabs. At bare minimum, it'll go into light legs. Or if you know you got a little sense in your timing here, you can go into stand light kick. Stand light kick will go into medium legs, which uh, ups the damage a fair amount, right? For effectively the same amount of effort. Also, if you happen to be going the route and using the stand light kick, if you want to spend the bar, it's a really good candidate for drive rush. Now, the damage is going to scale to trash, admittedly, but it gives you the strong knockdown and the corner carry. It's not so much about the damage. As long as you're not burning yourself out, even though the damage is eh, it is still worth it to drive rush. And that's uh, the case for a lot of Chun-Li stuff. Chun-Li uh, doesn't have lots of reliable big damage routes, but she does have strong knockdowns and good corner carries. So basically, you know, whenever applicable, whatever, into drive rush, into corner carry, into pressure, that is where she's gonna win a lot of her games. And of course, there's also Rush Medium Kick, Drive Rush, which we've belabored to death already in the video, so I'm not gonna keep, you know, just relitigating that point, but it's pretty good, and its constituent combos are some of her most important. Now, for a lot of characters, they usually fish for something like, you know, just Crouch Light, Crouch Light, right? Just do this. For her, it's uh, not as good, because, well, it's only a thousand damage if you go into Light Legs, right? Uh, what you want to be aiming for is like bird kick, which is better, better knockdown, more damage. But the timing on that is like legitimately strict. Even though you have the short window for bird kick, it is strict. If you want to go for three lights, point blank, three lights will chain. And then that you'll easily have time. But then again, if you're point blank, just go for stand light punch. Uh, stand light punch, once again here, gives you the magic combos. Uh, there's a whole section here for stand light punch into the counter hit combos very core and very critical to the character so check those out to note some of the other stuff as well like back heavy punch so back heavy punch naturally goes into stance light kick no counter hit needed no nothing um and if you do it on block there is admittedly a small gap but it's very small they have to know what's coming so by the time it's happened if they are not just mashing you get pushed out with the coke and you're nice and safe uh, it can also go into stance launch, but since you're unable to hit confirm this, generally Kikoken is the way to go, or at the very least, wait till the second hit connects, and then say you can go into spinning bird kick, and then get extra damage there. That could be the hit confirm, but uh, you just have to go into stance raw, so you can't do it. On the flip though, crouch heavy punch. So I have it set to random block right now, right? I don't know if they're gonna block or not. Who, who can tell? I can't. And Crouch Heavy Punch, since it is multi-hitting, does give you the chance to hit confirm. So keep in mind too, as well, it is safe on blocks. Negative three, but it's, eh, take what you can get, right? And if you see the hit coming, you can go right in the launcher. No big deal. Easy to hit confirm. So that's actually pretty strong, all things said and told. It is not the most difficult hit confirm in the world here. I myself am over 40 years young, as they say and I can still land it, no big deal. So there you go, right? Uh, safe on block, it is slower. We talked about it earlier in the video, it's slower, but safe on block, big reward on hit. And what happens when we have the big punish counter situation, right? Well, there's two ways to do it. There's the safe and easy way, and the other way where it's still mostly guaranteed, but if you're a little sloppy, you'll screw up. So if you get the big ol', you know, block the big ol' shore you, whatever, crouch heavy punch, now becomes the punish counter. And he can kind of do like, you know, the basic, right? That's guaranteed, so that's nice, that works. And if you're looking to spend, uh, you know, a little bit of meter, you know, and get over 3,000. So that is also nice. Now you can also do forward heavy kick. So the thing with forward heavy kick is, as you can see here, also will give you the damage and you need to spend a meter. Uh, but since it moves so forward so fast, there's definitely a lot of scenarios where you're even like a split second too early. What's gonna happen is, Either they'll just go through them, or you might hit them just like right before 
they touch the ground, then your combo's like airborne. And uh, the thing is, if you're just a little too late, you might miss like the punish counter window. So play around with it, right? Uh, generally for meterless damage, that's the way to go. And of course, if you're just looking to dump bar, you can get silly with it in all the usual Street Fighter six ways. chun -Li is not immune to just doing drive rush into drive rush into drive rush, right? So yeah, if you need the big dumps, you need the big punishes, these are some of the options you got to work with. Like not to be super reductive, but we can be really reductive. Uh, for Chun-Li, a lot of her damage from combos is just gonna be off counter hit, jab, and crouch medium kick and drive rush. Um, it's legit, like, she works good with simple stuff, really. Now let's enter the Oki zone. What do you do when you get the hit and what can you do when you knock him down, right? We'll start with an easy one first when you're cornered. So here's an easy side switch. Once again, like so many combos, we're generally looking for some kind of toe tap, right? So here's what we do. So say this is the product of mashing out, right? If we mash out, So what happened there is after we did our stance launcher, the first two toe taps are very quick. And then we fall a little bit and do heavy punch. And then we cross under and then re-dash back. At which point it's quite simple how this works. You can just walk forward, you're super advantage in their face and you're putting them back in the corner. This is not about the damage. The damage on this is not gonna be good. Starting with lights, then drive rushing. Like it's not gonna be good damage. It's just a simple concept. It's a way to get out of the corner and force your opponent back into the corner. So this next one's super key. So much of this video talk about medium kick, bird kick and why it's good, right? Why is it good? Because when you knock them down, your advantage is 34 frames. And you notice your Kami set the back roll too to create maximum distance. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna dash forward and then walk. And I'm immediately on top of her, doesn't matter. A combination of just the speed of my forward dash and my walk speed, here I am. And I'm plus 15 directly on top of you. From there, do whatever you want. Throw buttons, it doesn't matter. They're waking up and you're just directly on top. It's the best possible scenario, effectively. And there is a little trick to make this even a little bit better, right? Because like, here's the thing, natural. I can't hit you with a throw immediately or uh, even say if I hit you like with a button right away, you woke up a little too quick. Sure, all I gotta do is do a small delay. And uh, in most cases, that's all you're gonna do. And then they gotta deal with the throw. The throw is one of the strongest options off this, by the way, because, you know, they can't afford to hit buttons and you can hit them with the throw with such timing that anything they press that's not invincible will lose. But here's a fun one. So if I do this right away, back heavy punch, it'll whiff. It'll whiff, because that's just how it is. Like basically the frame you wake up is when my back heavy punch would come up. Basically the move just burns out just before you'd wake up. But if I do medium burk kick, tiny delay, then back heavy punch. Then it'll hit you. The thing about back heavy punch is it has so many active frames, six active frames, meaning it's out there for so much longer than the average move. So you just do that small delay, then dash, and then they'll wake up into the back heavy punch. So it could hit on the second, third, fourth. It like really depends on just how much you delay, right? There is the manual timing element of it. But the thing is just kind of as a concept, it's just really, really strong. Like right there, that made that plus nine on hit. Like the numbers can get really wacky on it. It can also be incredibly plus on block as well. So basically it just introduces a very powerful strike to the strike throw mix. Cause after the delay, like delay, then do it. Like you still throw them just fine as they're waking up. Like that's not a problem. As like, even if you do the delay timing, you can still throw them as they're waking up, right? That actually gets easier because you don't have to worry so much about delaying the throw. So it still becomes strike throw, just a very powerful strike throw. And of course, bird kick itself travels far. Like it's just a very valuable knockdown, except for toe tap knockdowns. This is your best knockdown. And the pressure is simple after the fact. Simple doesn't mean bad. This is quite good for you. And then you can just kind of go from there. Now, directly following from the previous section, we talked about the generalized Oki from medium bird kick. Now, what if we have the corner? Obviously in the corner, back roll doesn't matter, all that, so we can go into frame kill setups. 
So in the corner... That set up there, we purposely whiff back medium punch for timing issues. Then we go into back heavy punch, and it hits in the later active frames, making it plus eight on hit. Which means if it does connect, it naturally combos into crouching medium kick as well. Which also means it gives you enough time, because fast charge, to go back in the medium spinning bird kick, right? So that's the frame kill setup one. So that's another one right there. Just whiff back medium, or rather back heavy punch, that is, and you'll be plus seven. It's really that simple. You're plus seven in their face. So the tiniest delay, you have an auto time throw, or you have a very meaty stand medium punch, and that makes that plus eight. So that also makes that a combo. So now stand medium punch can combo into back heavy punch, and then from there, you can cancel in the stance, whatever, right? So, and obviously, stand medium punch is already plus on block. So, that just makes it wildly plus on block, right? So, it's another good frame kill scenario. So, that's frame kill number two. Another scenario is just with crouch medium punch. So, if you do it right, you're plus 12. And then, if you're plus 12, another frame kill. The back heavy punch is even more meaty than before. And plus 10 AZ combo on the crush medium kick and then the bird kick and then just redo, right? There's a lot of frame kill setups. And of course, any of these frame kills, you can just delay, throw them again. Like once you've established it. Medium bird kick's really good, y'all. Now, speaking of all this bird kick stuff, right? How about if we get EX bird kick? Because we get advanced damage. Like we get extra damage in the corner. So sometimes it's exactly what we want. Can we still get a frame kill? Yes, sir. All we gotta do is whiff crouch medium kick. So here we are with crouch medium kick, we're plus six. Writes itself, right? We can get a meaty stand medium punch, and therefore it's more advantage on hit. We can still go for the usual combos anyways, even more advantage on block, exactly a frame kill. Now for the corner combo, uh, there is the most smidge of variance on when it connects. Uh, there's a small frame window, uh, depending on when you press the button, but it doesn't matter because the setup covers all the timings. Uh, Worst case scenario, this hits on like the second active frame and even deeper, depending on the timing. So it just gets more and more advantage. It basically just automatically covers their wake up no matter what they do. And you do it till they're passive and then you throw them instead. Okay, now toe taps. You've seen some variant of this a million times now in this video, if you've not just skipped right to here, right? Why do we always do this other than obviously the corner carry is pretty good and the damage is all right. So you see here, Cammy back rolled after the fact. She basically back rolled the entire full screen. But we're plus 47. So basically every time I do this combo, double dash, even with the back roll, I am on top of you, like directly on top of you, and I'm always going to be plus. Depending on how you do the toe taps, there can be some small frame variance but it's always going to be mega advantage and you're always going to be directly on top of their face anywhere on screen. And if you're mid screen, well, it's basically like guaranteed corner. So that works out too, right? It is really simple as that. I don't really got to explain too much. We already talked about some other Oki. If you do it, dash twice after it's done, you're on top of them. No matter what, it's always your advantage. It's always your offense to press. It is really as simple as that. And now the next section. So here we are in the next section. So the other big thing this grants is the safe jump. So when you do this, you can be plus a bunch of different numbers depending on your timing. Now, normally the magic number for safe jumps is plus 42. If you got plus 42, you can jump, you got a safe jump. And of course, if you don't know what a safe jump means, it means if I jump at you and attack, the attack will connect, right? And then from there, I can combo. And if you block, then whatever, you block, sure. But say you go for like, you know, a Shoryuken style move, I can do my attack, still block in time. That is the essence of a safe jump. So you, the offensive player, gets the best of both worlds. If you hit, great. If they block, sure, they block, whatever. You still get it. And if they try to do something invisible to get out of the way, you still block in time. It's all you. And basically, you get a safe jump here. 
So basically, um, once again, Chun-Li has a much longer jump than everyone else. So we're not looking for 42 frames. 42 frames means you wouldn't have a safe jump because you'd still be in the air too long because she has such a floaty jump, right? She has a 49 frame jump. So what we're looking for here is a hit advantage of somewhere around 45 to 46. So depending on how you do your toe taps, like generally very low to the ground is the easiest stuff, but uh, it gives you just a bit too much frame advantage where your kick can be unreliable. So you want to complete the chain just a bit higher up in the air. So it changes the landing advantage and then you get your 45 to 46. And then it's really just a matter of height. So try to keep them higher up in the air and then you'll get the safe jump. If they're a bit lower to the ground, which is more comfortable for a lot of combos, that's not going to be a safe jump. While under the most hated of the terms, practice makes perfect. But if you pull it off correctly, well, then you jump in, you save your bacon, right? So it's just, that's really all it is. Just do the toe tap combos. Just try to keep them a little bit higher up when you complete it, not lower down, and it'll all work out. Unless it's Lily, specifically with her enhanced uh, light tomahawk buster, which is four frames. No one ever talks about this, but it's Lily, so I guess it doesn't matter, does it? So a couple of things here. Once we get this, what are we aiming for exactly, right? Well, the first one is just jump around house. So we get the kick and from there to make it a safe jump, we do have to hold back the block, right? So we can't just do neutral medium punch. That's not going to work because we'll get blasted by the X. So if we're holding back anyways, back heavy punch isn't bad or crouch medium punch because that can also go in the jab, right? Uh, you know, general jump pressure stuff. Just got to make sure you hold back. Chun-Li normally doesn't hold back because she wanted like a medium punch or something. Here, to get a safe jump, you have to hold back the block. So there you go. But you can also be a little tricky, a little sneaky. Because, you know, they're expecting the jump. But what if we go low? There we go. We mentioned that like an hour ago or something in this video. Uh, so that's where that's applicable, right? When they're going for... You know, to block the overhead, they're expecting the jump in. You just quickly sneak in a low. And um, due to the nature of damage scaling, starting with lights and going for like EX, uh, combo doesn't do tons of damage, but it is there. It gives us the medium or kick knockdown, which is the desirable knockdown. So that is pretty cool, right? And plus, you know, it's just cool to do like an EX fireball and still keep comboing after the fact. Normally, this is plus five, but since this gives us the exact spacing we need, this makes us plus seven because it has to travel just a little bit, which means links into medium kick, crouching medium kick that is, and then just works from there. So cool little thing. And of course to be fully reductive. Yo, just throw them. <laughs> That's an option. There is one fun little gimmick we can do though. So you really got to have the height like perfect to do this, but you can do a toe tap. And when you toe tap, you know, it hits, but when they block, you re pop up back into the air. And then when you pop yourself back up there, you can go for the air roundhouse. Most people, how they're going to deal with this is block high, immediately block low, right? That's that's generally how Street Fighter works. They're not going to expect the second actual overhead. The toe tap is not an overhead, but, you know, they see you jumping block high. And then the second overhead blasts them in the face. Certainly gimmicky. Won't lie. But sometimes you need a gimmick to win around, right? So there you go. And in summation... And uh, now that we've walked you all the way through Chun-Li, her basics, her intermediate, and a lot of her advanced stuff, Chun-Li is Chun-Li. <laughs> uh, once again, and we said this over an hour ago, because uh, this is the last segment I'm recording. This video is like almost an hour and a half long. Uh, Chun-Li, as it stands in Street Fighter, she's certainly not a bad character. She can do a lot, but the issue is more so than any of her... Uh, strengths or deficiencies as a character is she's just more difficult to play than the average character. And that would be the real thing that's holding you back. If you want to play Chun-Li, by all means, right? Um, but you just, you got to put in a bit more effort, unfortunately. Now that said, once again, as a strong character, she's been nerfed. She was much stronger in season one, honestly. So uh, candidate for buffs, she's definitely one. So time invested now can certainly pay off later. And she's fun. She's trying like, she plays such her own thing. Chun-Li's always been one of the hardest characters to categorize in like an archetype category. 
Like, we got Shotos, we got Brawlers, we got Rushdown, we got Grapplers. And Chun-Li usually just gets labeled as neutral, because, like, what else do you say? But uh, when it comes to playing that classic Street Fighter experience, she legitimately is one of the better characters at it in this game. Uh, to her detriment, almost, because she has to do it, right? She doesn't get to bypass it, which is what makes a character really strong, is not playing Street Fighter. But if you like that old back and forth, you like hitting a lot of buttons, and she is a, a high action per minute character, you will always be hitting buttons with Chun-Li for the most part, uh, then you will definitely have a lot of fun here. So that said, long journey. Once again, this video is like just going to be shy of an hour and a half. If you can leave a like, that'd be sincerely appreciated. I made this video all in one day, and this has been basically my entire day making this video. <laughs> uh, I like Chun-Li. She's fun. She's cool. She is Street Fighter. Like, yo. Ryu Chun-Li, this is Street Fighter. If you want proper Street Fighter, playing Chun-Li is a pretty damn good way to go about it. And that said, that is the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Street Fighter.